What is up? It is Andy coming to you on the Monday after Super Bowl. Hopefully the big game treated most of you well. I would guess that it treated most of you well considering the Chiefs covered because as I mentioned in the football video and a couple times before that, every Dan, Bob, Joe, Steve, Tom, and everybody with four-letter names and under took the Chiefs. It was like 80% of the public was on the Chiefs. They all got paid out because the Chiefs ended up winning in a game that ended up being somewhat of a thriller after a very boring first half. And I don't know if Vegas is recalibrating or trying to figure out how much they lost and they're doing some combing through all the numbers because every time I give you guys picks for the NHL, the night before, the player props are almost always available, especially if there are no games. They're always available. And I looked, and you guys know, I wait. I make sure I get all those things and then relay them to you in the middle of the night slash the morning. And I'm seeing no player props, and I don't know what the reason for this is other than, I don't know, maybe the accounting departments are all looking at the NFL and they're counting, well, we can't offer player props. We can't. We lost too much on these damn Chiefs. However, I'm still going to do the best I can to give you some picks here, and I can talk about some player props that I would like if they were available, and then we can check out the prices, or you can check out the prices when they do become available and see if it is worth your time. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about on this Monday is something that we talked about last Thursday, and this is when the premature commenter couldn't handle one minute of distress in their life and was fretting the Vegas 3-1 lead in the first because we took the under. There was one reason I took that under, and I talked about that reason, and that was Aiden Hill. I had used the reference I hadn't, see, I hadn't seen a goalie play this well since Vasilevsky in the second round against Florida. And I also mentioned on Pickin' Corners on Friday, I'm going to be tracking him and also Jay Gottinger. Well, Jay Gottinger turned in another great performance, which just like that Aiden Hill game, turned what probably would have been an over into an under. And that is the reason why I urge, and I talked about this on Pickin' Corners as well, if I ever give an under or a bump it up under and it's heavily tied to a goalie, you cannot put that bet in early. You cannot put that bet in prematurely and just hope the goalie starts. Because I know some of you are frauds and you know nothing about the NHL and you come here just to hope you hear a winner and then go. But then again, that's the person who deserves to lose. So, I don't know, go ahead. By the way, you, sir, if you're here, you never watch hockey, I got a good bet for you. Under six and a half in the Minnesota Wild Vegas Golden Knights. All right, regulars, hockey guys, I'm tying myself to this Aiden Hill play until it runs out. Because when a goalie's hot like that and they're in the zone, I always just try to ride them. We rode Vasilevsky like maniacs in that playoff series, the aforementioned Florida Panthers Lightning Series. He was playing incredible. We were taking unders. Life was great. And Aiden Hill... To me, as long as I see him continue to play like this, this is not just one of this is like four or five games now. He is laser focused and locked in. The only things that beat him in the last game were a deflection that you can do nothing about and a picture perfect breakaway shot that nicked off the post and in from Clayton Keller. Other than that, he was stopping everything once again. And this was after mostly stopping Edmonton and the Rangers and the Islanders. He's in one of those zones and especially when you don't have Jack Eichel on the other side. Vegas does have a bunch of players, but as you saw last game, they'll get a lead and they'll play defense. So what I'm trying to tell you is, I know this might be the last night, or the last game on the night, but I'm going to go with the don't you know, bump it up, under in the Vegas Golden Knights, Minnesota Wild, under six and a half, and this is contingent on Aiden Hill starting. It's not listed at six and a half, it's listed at six, but that's why we're going to bump it up just as we did in that last game, just as we did many times last week. And this week's going to be different than last week. It's not going to be a bunch of unders, or there are going to be considerably fewer unders, in my opinion. You're already starting to see those overs trickle up. It all kind of depends on the matchup. This is a matchup. Yes, Minnesota, you can get a little bit of everything from them, but I'm going to trust the side that I'm counting on, and that's the Vegas Golden Knights, who's been playing good defense and getting great goaltending. That's a combination I like. I'll take the under six and a half there. As long as I see Aiden Hill continuing to play this way, as long as he's starting, I'm going to take his opponents to stay under two and a half goals. The same way the Winnipeg Jets covered this in a million in a row when they were on that long run, I'm going to 
do the same exact thing with both him and Ottinger as they continue to play. So give me the under two and a half goals for the Minnesota Wild. And notice, I never, I'm not telling you to pick Vegas to win in any of these. I guess, though, by virtue of holding a team to two or fewer, I guess that means I kind of like them, but that's really, I haven't even thought about it. They are winning these games that he's playing well in, so I guess take from that what you will. So that's what I like there. The next game I'm going to look at is the New Jersey Devils hosting those cockroach crackers. And there's one simple thing about the Devils. On picking corners, I mentioned I was going to take Carolina versus them over the weekend because the way I look at Carolina versus the Devils, it's me versus you. It's people who can't help themselves parlaying everything, all offense, who gives a crap about odds, this, that, and the other. And I'll take the Carolina approach. I'll pick my spots and win one nothing in overtime and get my two points and get a little closer to my division bet. So we got the Devils playing the Kraken. And when it comes to the Devils, I guess I can congratulate them for holding a team to one. That was good. But I just don't trust them in their defensive end. You saw that wacky game versus Calgary. And it's a beautiful thing because when they get down, they push even further and then open themselves up more on the back end. So you guys know what I'm going to take here. Remember on Friday, what did I say? Every single team I like to score two plus. How'd that go for you all on Friday? Huh? 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 Even the Chicago Blackhawks? That was nice. Don't think I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Just because a weekend goes by, you don't think I forgot? About what I did for you last weekend, which is why many of you did come over to the Patreon last weekend and or over the weekend. I do want to thank all you new people who joined. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. And as you can see, that's where I'll be updating the Vegas picks, the Aiden Hill status, and any sort of updated picks associated with that game and all these games because I have no player prop prices. But if there was a game that I was going to pick some player props from. I think it would be from the Kraken because I'm when I pick player props or over on points or I look for line combinations, a couple guys on a line to register a point, I want to have a high probability of that. Who gives me a high probability of that? Bad defensive teams like the New Jersey Devils. Anyway, both teams to score two plus in this one because the Devils, they concede and then they chase goals. They have many offensively talented players to me this is another two plus and if you had to go away in this game against the devil have you ever i mean there has to be a very specific spot that i'm taking the devils they embody everything i don't trust in an nhl hockey team and you can say that the cockroaches don't have a ton of talent but those cockroaches work and you give me hard workers against a skilled team who just wants to score and I'll take a plus one and a half. I mean, this is a night where there can be potential upsets. But when when I think there can be a potential upset, I always veer towards, all right, well, just in case it's close, it goes to overtime. I want to know that I'm going to be on the right side of that bet. So I would prefer a plus one and a half. And then if you want, you know, you can find something else. But there is upset potential with Seattle at New Jersey. I do want to mention there are going to be a few games where New Jersey clicks offensively. They're going to win, you know, 7-3. And then a bet like this is going to look stupid. But they'll have a win like that, and then they'll just they'll lose, lose, lose. But I told you, even when that Jack Hughes comes back, it's not going to change the flow. You can have an amazing skilled player. What did Connor McDavid do for the Oilers earlier in the year? Either the team's buying in, you have a system, you're sticking to it, you play some defense, you get occasional goaltending. That's how you win. A star, two stars, three. It's not going to work for you. I have news for you. The Ottawa Senators have an all-star team. You probably wouldn't know that if you look at the record. They have some of the most skilled players in the league. You don't have a system. You don't play defense. Exactly everything I just said. Anyway, I like the... Both teams have scored two plus in the Kraken game. I'll lean plus one and a half towards the Kraken. And then a couple of those guys on the Kraken, like I wouldn't mind a McCann point with the Kraken plus one and a half or a Dunn point with the Kraken plus one and a half. And then you don't have to worry about any bad prices or anything like that. So that's what I like in that one. And then you could be looking at another pot another potential under and another potential upset in the Rangers-Calgary game. Calgary, right out of this all-star break, made a trade, bringing Kuzmenko 3-0. So maybe they're using that as fuel 
but that's like hitting that Nas and Fast and the Furious. Okay, you're going to get off to a nice little lead. Five, eight, ten games from now, they're going to lose like six in a row or something like that. But they're enjoying one of those runs. I've mentioned this to you guys countless times. Every single team, all the way from the Anaheim Ducks to the... Who's the last team alphabetically? The Washington Capitals? All of them will have a run this year. You've seen both of them. You've seen the Ducks have a run. You've seen the Caps have a run. They just happened way earlier in the year, as does it happen most of the time with the scam teams who get all of you excited but never me. So Calgary's on one of those right now. How do we take that? I do know that the Rangers have actually won a few in a row, but have not looked good whatsoever in all of them. We took them against the Lightning. That was great. They they covered. They won. But it was not a convincing victory by any stretch of the imagination. Then they blew a two-goal lead to Chicago. Chicago had not scored more than one goal in like five games. There they go. They scored three against the Rangers. <clears throat> Who called that one? And then there was the game against Colorado. I mean, they won all these games. So, I don't know. In my opinion, if you look a little deeper, they could be ripe for an upset. But I will also say they're keeping teams' chances down at five-on-five. And if Shesterkin can right the ship, we don't know who's going to start in this one too, but Markstrom's playing very great. I think Markstrom's play coincides with these Flames games. And if it wasn't for Patrick Waugh pulling the goalie down three and down four and down five, that game would have stayed under. I have a slight lean towards the under six and a half if we have a markstrom Shesterkin matchup. And then I think this is a plus one and a half Calgary, and they could have the opportunity to potentially upset too. And then lastly, I think there could be a potential upset with the Arizona Philadelphia Flyers game. If you're one of those people who just loves betting underdogs, you want to see plus money and you want to put some of them together because you're a parlay pirate, man, this slate might be the right one for you, but it's just not easy. It's so hard to pick winners like that. To just say two teams who are not that far off from each other. Just look at the lines. None of them are that overwhelming or crazy tonight. Anytime things are that close, it can be tough to straight out say, oh, well, this team's going to win. So I tend to think Arizona plus one and a half is where I want to lean in this game. And I actually want to lean both teams to score two plus. You know, styles make fights. Styles make overs and unders. And I think this Flyers-Arizona matchup... <laughs> You would think Nashville and Arizona would be, oh, that one would probably steer under, right? You have Soros at home, Nashville, and the Arizona coming in. Arizona can get involved in these wacky games. I mean, if it wasn't for a brilliant Aiden Hill performance, that game against the Knights was going over. Then that last one versus Nashville was way over. I mean, you have, a, they set this at what, five and a half? All right, I'm going I'm to go over. I'm going to go over in this game between these two teams with a plus one and a half lean on the Arizona Coyotes. And that's what I have for you here on this Monday. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. Make sure you're subscribed here to the YouTube channel so you can enjoy all the videos and know when they come out. And if you guys keep the engagement and you keep these if the views are above 7k and the comments are above 125 125 then i'll make sure that i upload these videos as soon as they're done in the middle of the night and then if not i'll just wait to the morning you guys did that for me in the last video this is a this is a fair rewards system here you don't get screwed i'm as honest as i can be you did your work. Now I'm going to do what I say. Isn't it a beautiful thing when people hold true to their word? So hopefully you guys uh, continue with that and you'll keep getting the videos as early as possible. I'll be back with you tomorrow to talk Tuesday sniffs. Hopefully player props will be available in the middle of the night. They weren't tonight. I will make sure to put those on the Patreon when they are available. Hopefully I see some more of you there. If not, no worries. I will see you here tomorrow. Talk to you then.